It seemed like it's flu season in my lab for computers uh, because uh, my Mac died and in the same week my PC died and this is my main lab PC I have it on my workbench down here and uh, this is a, uh, an older uh, shuttle uh, but I like this form factor so in the lab of course I don't care if it's a 4S of cable, actually I want a 4S of cable, I want to plug as many things as I can into the thing. Uh, and the shelves are a really nice form factor, they fit on the shelf, uh, but there's still two slots available in them. Uh, so it's a very nice uh, computer, uh, lab computer setup and actually I have another one down here. Uh, but you no, know, people give me a hard time that you no, know, the Macs are not reliable, and um, I don't know if it's me, but uh, I don't experience that at all. This is the first issue I ever had in the Mac, and on the PCs, uh, I don't know if it's me, but I have had so many issues. Uh, this one is no exception. Um, power supply failed, and then one of the internal fan failed uh, the other one the onboard ethernet failed and then the motherboard failed uh, and now this one has a new failure uh, but i saw it coming and i think it's the screen that it wouldn't come out of sleep but the computer would come out of sleep it wouldn't just come on the screen then i looked it up on the web and they say yeah that hp screen it's known just reduce the uh, brightness and it will come back up so i we used it to 75% of brightness and sure enough it worked for a while then a we'll, uh, time after that I had to go down to 50% in no work for a month or two and then eventually uh, it wouldn't come up anymore which tells me it's very likely a power supply failure of some kind. This uh, is a relatively modern piece of equipment manufactured around you know, 2010 ish. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I was, uh, if it had been yet another victim of the Taiwanese capacitor plague and if it had a bad uh, electrolytic capacitor in it. And I'm trying to figure out how to open that thing up. I saw a video telling me there is a way to pry it open. You can insert a blade between the screen, there's a metal part of the screen, and the bezel on the screen this way. That sort of did it. Okay, let me flip it over. Okay, so wonderful speaker. What a job. The, can't tell the power the, the the inverter here for the for the screen is here. We'll get that going. No. So this is really not worth repairing at all. But I am curious, it's in my name. I want to see if I can find which component is bad. It's attached somewhere. Attached here. Oh yes, thingy. And this one. As little tabs on the side you need to push. Okay, so now I am attached via nothing. Okay. I can reach inside and I can see the latch design right here, so there's just no way to do it. On the outside, you have to reach inside and latch it. There you go. And you and the latch is pretty tight. Okay. Uh. 
And then right away you can see a problem. The bulging. This one, this one, this one. The three green ones. These fellows, well they're 1000 microfarads, 225 volts. So I bet you those in that grate. Okay, those are super extra bulgy. Okay, let's measure those great capacitors. So 1000 microfarad it's supposed to be, oops. And it is 687 nanofarads. Oh wow, uh, with an ESR of 270 ohms. I guess that one ain't that good. And this one, an ESR of 33 ohm, which is better but terrible. And a capacitance of 5 microfarads. So basically, this, you know, those guys have evaporated, they're dried out. Bad modern capacitors. Unlike the old ones, they don't do it. And this one, another thousand microfarad supposedly, and it's 11 microfarad with an ESR of 15 ohms. So they are all bad. And so that's easy when you can just look at the thing and see it. But that's modern stuff, right? The caps are just bad. Uh, old stuff, most of the caps are good. I mean, 1401. Uh, IBM from 1959, it runs on all of its original electrolytics. We haven't changed any. And just to prove that the machine is working, is it here, is, here is a thousand microfarad. And it's 852 at 100, uh, 1 kilohertz, probably a microfarad at 120. Yes, yeah, just about the same. Uh, and ESR of 190 milliohms, so that's what a cap should be. All right, well, let's hope that it's only those two caps and I want to spend too much time on that. Right. This one I'm not even gonna test, either it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. It's not worth spending any more time. And sure enough, it works again. That was the problem. Uh, I actually like the screen because it's like, like the Apple screens. It's uh, it's glossy in front. It it's quite nice. And um, actually, you can see this one. Uh, color management information. This one has quite a few errors on the clock. Uh, service errors. <laughs> Fourteen thousand six hundred and thirty-five. <laughs> so <laughs> it has worked. This is I, I bought that one uh, off the floor, and I didn't realize they had you no know, use it forever. But in any case, um, don't ever buy caps from this brand over here. What are they? Cap caps on caps on. Okay, and then we're finally going to see what I always wanted to see, what's inside an electrolytic capacitor, which actually should be pretty simple, should be two, two uh, pieces of aluminum electrodes separated by some paper that should have some electrolyte. The outer plastic, that's the plug, and that's the interior. Why it's way black? Clean that up. Okay, that's the bad one. And for reference, and let's sacrifice a good one or a better one. I tested this one, works, it's SME, so I don't know what kind of quality that is. 
but it tested good. Same voltage, same value. Okay. Should be ready to go. Oh, this one is a lot harder to pull. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Ah, you can see a slight color difference between the two. And that's a defective one. You can see it's all dark and all dry, and that's a working one. And it's nice and shiny. And it looks wet. It kind of confirms what everybody already knows that it's a um, it's an electrolyte formulation problem uh, where the, uh, there's something wrong with the chemical in electrolytes. It was copied wrong or they got a wrong batch of something and it just uh, doesn't hold up. Let's unroll these. So it's basically a rubber plug. There you go. And oh yeah. You can see why oh, it's all rolled up. It's a cinnamon roll. Uh. Okay, they got it. it. Smells burnt. Right. And there should be two electrodes to this. It should separate the well. All right, so that was the bad one, and we're going to do our control, the good one. Oh, why it's a lot harder to take a Part. So at least the the plug is in there way better. Okay, this one had a much better retention of the plug. There's one turn that seals it. There you go, this one looks way healthier. Just much better and it separates in two and you see how it's kind of wet looking and my, my gloves getting wet okay so you, oh here you see uh, the electrolyte All right nice and shiny and full of contact making electrolyte so this this is a good cap this is one electrode and which to me looks like the active electrode and this is the other one uh, I, I have to look at the microscope which is which but you can tell the difference between the you know, healthy cap and the very unhappy dried out one and under the microscope, the two electrodes do actually look slightly different. It's not as striking as I expected. You have to go to the highest magnification. And both have been definitely treated, but you can see that this one has much more of a three-dimensional structure. I have to, if I focus around, I'll focus on the top and the bottom. And the other one is a lot smoother although it, it appears slightly pitted but it doesn't have that large three-dimensional structure i don't know if it will come through the the microscope video uh, so the the idea is that you you would etch the surface of it oh yeah you can see the difference here it's really it looks like sand and so you would edge the surface of it to increase uh, the surface area and oxidize it and that's the oxide on that large surface area that gives you the large capacitance and the other electrode is only there 
to uh, make a contact to the electrolyte and then the electrolyte makes a contact to uh, is, is the other electrode on the oxide side. N not as striking a difference as I thought. And you know, those are the caps that gave electrolytic caps a uh, such a bad rep and that uh, you know that's why people say well everybody knows when you do electronics all you have to do is replace the caps well it turns out on modern stuff like this they are kind of right uh, but this is kind of a, a modern aberration all right we survived and this guy has gone for another 10,000 hours